To my way of thinking, this is one of those devices that you don't know you need until after you have it and then you realise, I needed that. Yeah, um, and in fact, I've bought this one because I like it. This is the TC Electronic BMC2 and it's a device that takes digital signals in and gives you analog or digital signals out. Well, lots of devices do that. What's special about this one? Okay, well this one, BMC is Shelf or Broadcast Monitor Controller. Um, so it's not just a DAC, it's, it's a DD converter too. The basic idea is this is a volume control for your monitoring speakers, whether they be analog or digital input. It'll drive either, there's XLR outputs for analog mm -hmm. and you can have either optical, ADAT or SPDIF digital output and indeed those are the formats that it'll accept as a digital in and you can have all of them connected concurrently mm. and then just choose whether you want SPDIF, ADAT or TOSLINK oh, well, so input. If, if that's all it did I don't think you'd be spending that much money to buy something with a volume control and a number of gazintas and gazouters. People do. People do. This is actually uh, on the market. I did some studying because I went mm. looking for a new a digital audio converter because I'm tired of people bagging me for turning up with an iPod and rightly so they should bag me for that. So, I went looking for a, a nice digital analog converter with XLR output and the ability to have a fixed reference level, which this does. Mm. First thing, you can set a consistent reference level and there's just a little button here, you press that and it will set the volume to a known level. Um, so so you, could run, you could run it back to, say, uh, the Dolby reference of 85 dB. Yeah, yeah, whatever mm. you want. And you can, you can adjust that level. And that reference level applies for both the, uh, the speakers and the headphone output, individually controllable if you want. Mm. There's a dim button which will attenuate it by, I think, 18 dB. You can have the alternate speaker output button and that will flip from the analog outputs so the digital ones are activated instead. Mm. Um, and there's a cut button which you hold down for an extended period and that gives you volume, um, power control as well. The, the, the place where this really comes into its own is where you're in a situation where you want to trust. You want to trust that what you're hearing is actually what was coming out of the device. And, and I think most of us are used to the situation where we've got a digital file, might have been in digital domain 100% of its life, until you try to play it to somebody out of, oh, I don't know, your, your, your laptop, your MacBook, your PC, whatever it is you happen to have with you. Mm -hmm and you do that playback, and as soon as you come out of that device on the analog spigot, you can no longer trust that the frequency response hasn't been changed, or the level hasn't been changed, or some noise has been added. This takes that lack of trust completely out of the equation. Yeah, pretty much. And look, I mean, the retail on this is 750, which it itself is, is actually not bad in the scheme of um, pricing for, for digital analog converters, but it, it's the extra stuff that this does that, that makes it really a very nice workable thing. And aside from anything else, it feels good. Mm. Um, on that note of, of files in the digital domain, obviously compression, uh, data compression has be become huge um, with uh, sort of the need to be able to deliver things in the available bandwidth. I mean, it's becoming less of an issue as the bandwidth is increasing in the yeah. country for internet and so on. But for the compression side of things, it's also got this button down here, which I love. And this is the stereo mono side button. And so you can either monitor stuff in stereo or mono or side mode, which is sort of like, as far as I can tell, it's a, it's a phase flipped additive of both channels. And um, the stuff that you hear on that is yeah. incredible. Uh, you can listen to a, a WAV file which is uncompressed and then encode it as you know, MP3 or AIF or whatever you want, then listen to it again and you can hear all the compression artifacts. Oh, that and sounds more like a left minus right, so you, you hear the differences in, in the coding between the two channels. Well, that is effectively you know flipping the phase on one channel and, and adding them. So Strange about that. We're both right, John. Yeah. But um, yeah, the stuff that you hear on that is, is bizarre and, mm. and you don't realise just how much damage these compression codecs are doing to your signal file until you listen to the stuff they leave behind afterwards. And it's ugly. Yeah. It's really ugly. You, you would think that we'd actually done better than that. But if you go back and you have a listen, for instance, to some of the coding done on mini disks, which were regarded as actually quite good, if you recorded a signal identically to both channels and then it did the phase reverse, listen to the artifacts, listen to whatever's left. Mm. There was, you, you could just hear heaps of what well, I can only describe as crap. 
where the two coders had actually done different things. Yeah, and if they're getting identical signals, your phase difference should be absolutely nothing. Absolutely. You should be hearing silence. And if you're not, then you're creating something that sooner or later the, the listener is going to be tiring. Yeah, and this is going to tell you. Mm. This is a great device. And look, toss it in your backpack. I'm, I'm taking this on the roadshow.